What's going on, guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDoc.com. You may be wondering, why is he broadcasting from his kitchen? Well, I'll tell you why. I'm in the process of relocating not just my office, but since it is a home office, my home as well from one place to another. Now, I have a new and exciting studio I'm working on, hopefully, if everything pans out, and I'm getting that set up, but it's not ready just yet, so I'm broadcasting from random places in the house. But you know, the phone reviews and the phone fun doesn't stop when we take a move or when we try to switch up our offices. So we just roll with it. So I'm gonna roll with the kitchen today. Hope that's okay. Here's the HTC Droid Incredible 2. It's a successor to the HTC Droid Incredible on Verizon. Wildly popular device at that. Came out last year in April, was back ordered, delayed due to the uh, the LCD and uh, and some of the other things that are in the you know, supply constraints, things like that. Here it is, the Droid Incredible 2, the replacement. It has some cool features like global roaming capabilities, a front-facing camera, uh, 8 megapixel camera which is the same as the other one but that front facing camera one good for video calling and it also has capacitive buttons that rotate as well. Is this a device for you? At $200 should you get this or should you go with one of the other future proof devices or at least more future proof like the uh, LG Revolution which is coming or the HTC Thunderbolt or Samsung Droid Charge both of which are, or both of which are available right now. Which one should you go with? $199 or spend a little bit more and get that 4G device? We're going to figure that out and phone dogs Full review, HTC Droid Incredible 2, which starts right now. For those of you that really loved the HTC Droid Incredible, your successor is here. Here it is, the HTC Droid Incredible 2. It's available now at Verizon Wireless for $199.99 after a mail-in rebate and a new two-year agreement. Now, it's a 3G-only device, and it's one of these things Verizon's doing. At least, you know, they haven't come out and said it, but I think it's something they're doing where they're really pricing their 3G devices at that magical $199 price point, and they're lifting their 4G devices to you know, $249.99 to $299.99, somewhere in there. So I imagine that to be what you'll see going forward with the LG Revolution, the Motorola, Motorola Droid Bionic or Targa, whatever they call it, when it launches. But anyway, you know, a good device, it does lack 4G, but the specs are pretty decent. One gigahertz Snapdragon processor, single core Snapdragon processor, four inch display. So here are a couple of improvements from the original Droid Incredible. One, four inch display instead of a 3.7 inch display, and it's a super LCD. Uh, two, global roaming capabilities. Three, it's running HTC Sense 2.1, and you'll see the new home icon down here, the new capacitive button. You'll see a slightly revised menu, and then you'll see a slightly revised menu structure down here, which we'll get into in just a second. So you have that, you have your global roaming capabilities, you have your uh, front-facing camera as well. So they've added a 1.3 megapixel front-facing camera up here. Skype Mobile comes pre-installed, and of course you can download some additional programs as well, like Quick, Fring, things like that, and use it to your heart's content uh, You know, with chatting with your friends. Still has an 8 megapixel camera, 1,450 milliamp battery, and the design, if you're thinking, hey, this looks familiar, well, it's the Incredible S, which was announced at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona in February. So in Europe, it's the Incredible S. In the States, we kind of knew it was coming, but it was launched as the HTC Droid Incredible 2. Volume rocker on the left side, micro USB charging port on the left side. On the right side, you have nothing, so no camera button, no uh, no shortcut key, nothing like that. Your dual uh, LED flashback here, eight megapixel camera, speaker port, and then on the top, your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and power button. Now let me pull this off. And you know, it's a really good looking design. It really takes the uh, original Droid Incredible and improves on it. You know, I thought the original Incredible was a good design within itself, but they've really done a good job. You know, they pulled away some of the two-tone, so if you, know, you weren't a fan of the Verizon two-tone color, it's no longer there. You have the ability to stick with uh, stick with one color unless you have a case, of course. Like I said, 1,450 million battery, and I'm not gonna pull the battery out, but underneath the battery is the SIM card slot for global roaming capabilities. Micro SD card slot over here. Let's see, out of the box you get probably, okay, an eight gigabyte micro SD card, not a 16 or a 32 like you see in the Droid Charge or some of the other, uh, or the HTC Thunderbolt, some of those devices. So like I said, you know, running HTC Sense 2.1 atop Android 2.2, so no gingerbread just yet, but uh, hopefully that'll come in the near future. So you can see, here's the apps out of the box, and there's this new menu structure with the HTC Droid Incredible 2, as opposed to just scrolling down like any typical device, like let's say, you know, the T-Mobile G2, you can go over here, scroll up and down, you know, it scrolls up and down pretty normally. This scrolls down, by menu, so you can see, you know, it scrolls down by page, if you will. So page of apps, page two of apps, page three of apps, and then to the bottom, 
with page four of apps. Now you can see all apps here, uh, frequent, downloaded, Verizon Wireless. And when you look at Verizon Wireless, you really see how much Verizon bloatware is pre-installed on all of these devices, but particularly the Droid Incredible 2 out of the box. 3G Mobile Hotspot, Backup Assistant, Blockbuster, City ID, Kindle, Let's Golf, Mobile IM, My Verizon Mobile, NFL Mobile, Need for Speed Shift, <gasps> Skype Mobile, Slacker, VCast Apps, VCast Media, VCast Music, VCast Tones, VCast Videos, Voicemail, VZ Navigator. Who has too long breaths? But you get the idea, none of those can be uninstalled. So even if you don't want to use them, you can't uninstall those and use the memory for something else. You're kind of, uh, kind of up a creek without a paddle, as the old saying goes. Now one cool thing, another cool feature on this one versus the original device, which isn't, you know, it's not notable enough to really bring it up as like an improvement. I mean, it is an improvement, but not a huge thing. We go into something like the internet, for example, and we'll go to phonedog.com. We'll take a look at the browser while we're at it. If we go into landscape mode, you can see the capacitive buttons rotate with the display. You can see home, menu, back, and search, moving. Now here's the interesting thing, they don't move on this side, they only move on the left side. So even though the page rotates on both left and right, you're only gonna get that capacitive switch if you use it on your left side. Maybe it's a little bit biased towards left-handed people. I don't know, I'm left-handed, so I guess I would just by default be in favor of that. So you can see here's the page loading up and it's loading up pretty quick despite being on the uh, 3G connection. You know, I've been working with this device for a couple of days. You know, it, it, once you're dealing with HSPA+, WiMAX, LTE, these fast 4G technologies, 3G is pretty slow and it, you know, especially Verizon's 3G EVDO is pretty tired. Um, and same thing, you know, with Sprint as well, but EVDO is just on its way out anyway. It's an old technology and uh, it's very slow. So you can see pinch to zoom, very responsive reasonably quick, not the quickest on the market by any means, but certainly will get the job done. You can see add bookmark, bookmarks windows, and it gives you that typical HTC Sense look and feel when you go in through your bookmarks. You can see those. And we go back to our windows, for example, and I can scroll back and forth, and I get this nice little view of the site that I left it at. So I can go back to windows, you see it left me at the top. But all in all, I'm very impressed with the speed. It looks good. It uh, loaded relatively quickly, ads look good, it's running Android 2.2 obviously, so the flash advertisements are there. They're loading with relative ease and the page is still operating pretty quickly. So it's running HTC Sense 2.1, but let's back up for a second and take a look really at HTC Sense 2.0, which is kind of the core uh, software under 2.1, if you will. So if it debuted with the Thunderbolt HTC Sense 2.0 and it allows some new personalization options that 1.5 and the other previous versions didn't offer. So if you're coming from something like the Evo or the Droid Eris, things like that, you're used to seeing a plus button down here. Well, it's been replaced by this little paintbrush looking, uh, or easel looking thing, or not, paint, not easel, but you get the idea, paintbrush. I'm not an artist, okay? I don't know what it's called. I can't think of the, uh, the term. But you see it opens up this personalization menu where you can choose between scene, wallpaper, skin, you can do widgets and more. So it's kind of this catch-all personalization area for uh, for your device. So the downside, it doesn't give you access, or Verizon's disabled access rather, to HTCSense.com and HTC Hub, which are two free programs that allow you to download additional ringtones, additional scans, additional wallpapers from HTC servers to your device. So if you pull out something like the HTC Inspire 4G, and you scroll through uh, the skins here, you're gonna see apply, but you're also gonna see a button on the right-hand corner that says get more skins, or get more, I believe it is. When you click on that, you can activate uh, an HTCSense.com account, and from there, you can download skins that they have available on their server. Not the case with this, you're stuck with what Verizon's pre-installed on it. So, you know, it's a catch-22. They want you to download their apps, they want you to download their music, and not go through HTC. But still, you know, personalization, is, uh, is good and I think both can coexist within one device. But let's just say, you know, Slate's what it's on right now. That's the HTC you know and remember most likely and you have a couple of different options to choose from. Same thing with Scene. Uh, you can change from Verizon Scene, Wallpaper, and then Widgets. It brings up all the HTC and Android widgets. Now, like I said before, with HTC, you know, not only do they have beautiful widgets, but they give you the choice between HTC widgets or Android widgets. So we come over here to calendar, for example, you see HTC and you see Android, you have the option to choose. The Android one's kind of boring, but you look here at the HTC widget and you can see that there's some nice options like agenda, for example. Great for me personally when I'm traveling, I can click on that. I have to drag it to another screen. Let's see. Bam, right there. There we go. Okay, so no upcoming events. I don't have my work email obviously synchronized to this or there'd be a bajillion things 
But uh, you get the idea. Agenda pops up, and it's a nice, colorful, very clean widget that are you know they're very functional and they're dynamic. So within this widget, I can scroll up and down through my agenda. Whereas with a typical Google widget in Android 2.2, at least they're pretty you know pretty static. I mean, it's just a widget. You click on it, it takes you to your calendar, and then you go from there. So these widgets really uh, make your life much easier.